guess who's back again? I'm gonna keep saying this until it actually becomes a habit to film these videos because <laughs> it's always a surprise when I pull out this camera. So I've decided that here on this channel I'm going to be talking about the books that I read this year as I try to complete my 241 unread books challenge. I don't know why I'm calling it that, that's what I called it. I'm going to be talking about the books in groups of five so every time I finish five books I will film a wrap-up video and then at the end of every month I'll be doing like a this is how many books I have, this is how many books I acquired video as well. If you want like week to week updates I am doing that on TikTok because I feel like those videos are so short form it doesn't matter how many books I've actually read. So let's get into it. The first book that I finished like I mentioned I probably would is Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I also read The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood last year and I really enjoyed that one because I read it before I knew that it was Raylo fic. It was fun, it was a good time, I love a fake dating plot so I was really excited to go into Love on the Brain but I didn't enjoy it as much as Ali's first book. It felt really derivative of the first book honestly because the male love interest sort of sounds exactly like the male love interest of the first book in terms of like description like of his appearance I was like is this Adam Driver all over again and also the relationship is also like the relationship plot points are also very similar to the first book where they're both about like the guy actually really liked the girl the entire time but there was a misunderstanding because he couldn't express his emotions exact same like plot points so I wasn't as interested while I was reading it because it felt like oh this is exactly the same book by the same author I might still check out love theoretically because it does look at least from the cover that the characters at least are not going to be described exactly the same so that, that's a starting point for me I haven't read the synopsis I hardly ever read synopses for um, rom-coms honestly I just pick them up and hope for a good time <laughs> and speaking of rom-coms that gave me a good time <laughs> we'll discuss Janie Garo's two books that I actually finished this week as well finished ties that tether and the sweetest remedy I am reading these for work currently um Jane has a third book that I am about to start called where we end and begin Janie Garo is a Toronto based author we love that and she writes about Nigerian um, female protagonists and like their explorations of love but also identity and family. I'm gonna be talking about these books a little bit more in depth I think I'm gonna do a separate video on three books that I've read from her but the first Ties That Tether is a lot more traditional rom-com so if you are more into traditional rom-coms where it's like focusing on the relationship and how they get to the happily ever after I would recommend that one to read. Sweetest Remedy sort of adds more elements into the story there's still a romance at the center there are multiple perspectives that we actually carve out and get more in depth with. It's more about family and identity than it is about the romance so I really enjoyed that one. I thought that one was so it was so well written and I'm so I'm really excited to go into where we end and begin. And then the key that I've actually figured out to actually getting books read during the week is listening to non-fiction audio while I am doing like work tasks that don't require a lot of mental power like editing photography or like doing some excel stuff like things that I'm not really like fully using my brain to have like complicated thoughts about. I've been listening to some nonfiction, so I was able to finish Dear Girls by Ali Wong and Have I Told You This Already by Lauren Graham. I've had Dear Girls on my TBR since I heard it was coming because I really liked Ali Wong's stand-up comedy specials and like I mentioned in a previous video I like reading nonfiction from comedians because it is funny normally. Both of these books were funny, they had their moments. If I had to choose a favorite it was definitely Dear Girls. I felt like it had a little bit more depth. It was a little bit more narratively about showing what the world was like for the parents versus what they hope for it to be like for the kids and it had like a narrative framework of being letters directly to the daughters which is a little bit more interesting. Have I told you this already is just like funny anecdotes and stories from Lauren Graham. It didn't have a lot to do with Gilmore Girls so I'm thinking I probably will enjoy her other um, collection talking as fast as I can because that one is more Gilmore Girls heavy so I will be checking that out eventually. These were not my favorites of the week. If I had to choose a favorite it would be The Sweetest Remedy for sure. So those are the five books that I have read so far you should let me know if you've read any of them. Ties at Tether and Sweetest Remedy were both fours like 4.5 for Sweetest Remedy and then everything else that I read was a 2.5 I'm pretty sure like it was like good it was like standard decent reads they weren't horrible so I'll see you guys probably next with my wrap up for the month I don't think I'm gonna be able to read five books every week <laughs> like I'm probably gonna say at the end of every video about this if there are any books that you can think of that you're like this is an immediate yes you will really enjoy reading this let me know and if it's on my tbr shelves I will pick that one up hope you guys enjoy whatever you're reading out there and I'll see you later